when we correct a dog, the, the objective is for them not to do that again. So you never have to correct a dog again. I've just found over the years that if we like double mark something, it just drives it in faster. Okay. What's up guys? We made it to Idaho. It's really pretty here. We're about an hour late because we messed up the time. We were traveling and then all of a sudden we're like, yeah, we're just gonna make it. And then we were immediately an hour late because of the time change. So it was our fault, but we're here. There's a Cracker Barrel. It's a Cracker Head. It could be a Cracker Head. <laughs> anyway, excited to do some private training here in Idaho. Let's get it. Jimmy B. Conan. He doesn't meet new people well, and he doesn't settle. So when people come to my house, it's I don't want people come to my house. It's too <laughs> stressful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that's not like who I am. I like to have people over, but he won't calm down. How old is he? A year and a half. Okay. When did uh, the suspicion start to happen? Kind of always. I think we really dropped the ball on not socializing him soon enough. I think the most beneficial thing for you guys is probably how to introduce him to other people. The first thing we should do is just go outside, just take a walk together. If you have a dog that is genetically inclined to be suspicious and huffy and puffy, then your job is to have good obedience and control. Okay. It's like, hey, I got this dog that turned into this, but your obedience has to always rise above that. Cool. Because it doesn't matter if you have a man eater or a puppy, mm -hmm. if you have an obedient dog, you can do anything you want. Nice. Definitely more confident out here. Yeah, Definitely. he knows. This is what we do most, I'd say. Okay, cool. Give him a little break. Break. Good. Mm -hmm. So just remember like when you're out and you're handling with him, because of his suspicion and his insecurities, you want to make it an inside job between you guys so, so he doesn't have an opportunity to build. Okay. So whenever he gets a little nervy like that, you can just like, even now, just draw him back and recall him to you. Good. And then have a little bit more um, assertiveness to it. Okay. So again, like when Sean came out of the room and he was like, oh crap, or when this person or whatever, any person walks into the environment and he gets nervous, you want to say his name and then recall him back okay. into you. Okay. Don't, so don't, don't muffle it. Don't like make it really clear. He kind of goes into this tunnel vision. He just goes, and then he just like locks in on certain things and he gets, he builds himself up. He works himself up. He makes himself nervous. So you just say his name and and be a little bit more assertive about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So correct that just a little bit. Okay. Hey. So give him a give him a leave it or say something. Okay. Because everything that we do with him, because he's an insecure dog, has to be clear. Okay. Like if you have somebody with anxiety too, mm -hmm. and you're just like, hey, here's ten things I need you to do. How do I do it? Ah, don't worry about it. Well, where do I need to be? Don't worry about it. They're gonna have way more anxiety. Okay. So when you're with him and he goes, I don't know what to do, and you're just like, you're, you're not as clean with things. When we correct a dog, the, the objective is for them not to do that again. So you never have to correct a dog again. Okay. Some cases that's not realistic. Some cases it is. Leave it. Good boy. Good leave it. Good leave it. Good boy is okay to use, but I've just found over the years that if we like double mark something, it just drives it in faster. Okay. Like Could when we're, it. yeah, it just reinforces it. Like you, certain people have different reward systems verbally. Pet owners do not. They would say whatever comes out of their mouth <laughs> that makes sense in English. Yeah. Yay. Good. Yeah. Nice. They don't know. It. Amazing. You did it. They don't know. We're doing classical training. We're raising puppies. We're doing a competitive obedience. Your markers are extraordinarily important. Okay. I work with pet owners, and they could give a shit about that. You just want to have clarity. I've been using BarkBox for years for my personal dogs. And the cool thing about BarkBox is their creativity on the themes. Every single month is a different theme. And when you go and sign up, you're gonna pick out what your dog likes and what kind of toys they're gonna want for their particular play and their interest. If you guys use my link listed below, you guys will get a discounted rate if you sign up for 12 months. The box is only $23 for the first box. If you wanna try it out for six months, it's only $26 at a discounted rate per box. Or if you guys wanted to just try it for one month or get it for a friend for one month, look at all this stuff you get for only $36. You get all these different toys, all these different treats, and it's so fun for your dog to open it up with you every single month. So make sure you guys click the link below to get your Double Stuff Deluxe Bark Box from our friends over at Bark Box. And thanks again for Bark Box for sending this stuff over for our friends to enjoy. 
So what you would do for, for new people again, and we can walk together, okay. is because, because he has this hybrid, when we have a dog that is fearful, they do this like rear end nip. Yeah. And I just don't want him to do that. That's all. It's a, it's a, it's a herding thing. Yeah. It's a border collie thing. It's a, I'm afraid of you. He's just trying to get me away. Yeah. And it's very instinctual. That's why every time I take him, he goes this. Around. That's why a lot of people with like herding dogs, mini Aussies, Aussies, uh, BCs, um, shepherds, like there's like, oh, my dog only bites people in the butt or my dog yep. only bites people in the legs or my dog only bites he, people in the back. He nips my boyfriend's ankles. He doesn't do it to me, but. Yeah, he's just hurting. <laughs> but that's what he would want to do to me. And that's why I'm just, that's why I'm just, yeah. come on, bub. So I'm just gonna be frontal with him. I don't know that he would, I just, I know that if he did it, I would be like, oh, I'm an idiot, duh. Yeah. yeah. I knew that was coming. <laughs> That's what I try to, you know, stay successful. Dog training isn't perfect, but if I can make it as perfect as I can, I will. Good boy. So I'm just, uh, just bringing him out. He's obviously really nervous, but I'm just working with him out here. Come on, bud. Nice work. And like I said, it's probably good for you just to see other people handling him, you know? Yeah, it's true. I, I'm the only one that does it, so. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I forget how much progress we have made. Right, right. Yeah, he just needs a little bit of time and obviously like food is helpful. Good, but what I've been doing right now is doing a little bit more contact stuff. Okay. So I'm just holding the treat so he's, so he's working the treat out, but um, he's hanging out with me a little bit longer. Okay. Yep. Good boy. Yes. Good. Okay, like we just need to do this for each other. Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where I would start like putting in basics to kind of like get back on track with them, you know? Okay. Just making it like, no big deal. Okay. Yeah, sit. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Down. Cool. You know, just not making it a big deal. So I think some people's um, roadmap is like affection now. Um, yeah. Just obedience is fine. Sit. Yeah. Yes, good sit. Good. Good job, buddy. And I think that kind of like opening that door with me, he's like, oh, maybe they have food. I don't know. <laughs> so that's good. But I think that that's what it comes down to is not stranger, everyone else stranger. And then once that door kind of breaks down with a stranger, he's like, oh, this opens up many opportunities potentially.